Hey everybody, welcome to part three of the Magic the Gathering online tutorial series on the Mana Lake. I'm John, as always, and today we're going to cover gameplay. We're going to cover playing the game of Magic. We're not going to be playing any real games of Magic. Here I'm just going to walk you through the interface and uh, things you need to know. Uh, you really need to know. So this is the play lobby. This is how you join tournaments. This is how you join games. We have constructed tournaments. Tournaments are things that have entry fees, that pay out in prizes. Some of them are scheduled, some of them are queues. So here we have constructed tournament queues. These are where all of your 1v1 and 8-man queues live. So if you want to join one, you would say, uh, you know, this here standard 2 needed. That means two players need to hop in here to join it. You click details, that's going to give you this. You can pay your two event tickets, choose your deck, and you will join this. When the next person joins, there's somebody joining right now. When the next pl player joins, you will start that tournament. An eight man, of course, requires eight people before that happens. And that's about it for queues, really. The other way of playing in tournaments is scheduled tournaments. These start at a very specific time. So uh, at 6 p.m., we could join a legacy daily, and this one's waiting on 16 people. We could join a modern daily, a standard daily, uh, a popper daily. We could join one of these dailies. When the scheduled time hits, if there's enough people joined up, the tournament will start. If there's not enough players, there is a space of time. I feel like it might be 15 minutes or so in which more people can join before the event just c is considered to have not fired and not happened. That's constructed. There's also limited, which if you've watched the Mana Leak, you know I play a whole heck of a lot of. There are limited queues, just like the uh, constructed queues. Uh, you're going to choose the format you want. Do you want Theros block 6222? That means that first place gets six packs, second, third, and fourth place get two packs. 8-4 means first place gets eight, four, uh, second place gets fourth. And there's win a pack, which or pack per win, which of course is a pack per win. Um, yeah, all of your options are here. Same with the constructed ones. You click details, you pay your entry fee, and you're good to go. Just like constructed, there are uh, limited scheduled events at specific times. And there's also release queues. If a set is currently in release, it's going to show up here. This is currently just test stuff for an employee and internal sealed events. But if we were back, uh, you know, a couple of months ago when Dragons of Tarkir came out, for the first few weeks, all of the drafts and sealed events show up here. So if you've just joined Magic Online and you're looking for a set that just released and you can't find the drafts, they're probably in here. Once the release period is done, they'll go back to the queues section and they'll stay there. Finally, there's constructed open play. This is where you go if you want to play a game with no entry fee, with no prizes on the line, against just some person. So there's four different skill level rooms, just starting out just for fun, getting serious tournament practice. I do beg of you, if you're going to be playing a top tier deck, please be in tournament practice or getting serious. Don't join the just starting out room because you want to beat people up with your awesome deck. Please respect the skill level uh, room. It, it just is. It makes it a much better experience for everybody. But you can see games that are waiting for people. So these two people are waiting for somebody with a modern deck or a standard deck. If you don't want to wait for somebody, then you can choose a deck and hit host a new match. And then you'll wait for a player. But that's how you join uh, constructed open play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly set up a solitaire game so that I can show you the actual interface of Magic Online. So I'll be back in one quick second. So here we are in a solitaire game of Magic. This obviously isn't going to be how you're generally playing Magic. You're going to generally have another person to play against. But I just wanted to go through uh, some things like stops and priority passing and whatnot. So any messages that you receive about the game, about you needing to do something, are going to show up uh, in this white box here. Normally it's going to be about middle of the screen because your opponent's information will be up there, but right now it's up at the top. So our first question is, do we want to mull this or do we want to keep it? It's a pretty terrible hand, so let's mulligan it. So we click mulligan and it's going to automatically happen. Be very careful with your mouse clicks on Magic Online because if you accidentally double click or if the program lags for a few seconds and you get annoyed and you click again because you don't think it actually clicked, it will just take those clicks and there's no way to back up. 
This isn't paper magic where you can say, oh wait, I want to go back a step. You can't do that here. When you click a button, yeah, that button has been clicked, so be very careful. This is an awful hand. Let's mulligan it as well, and uh, let's keep this one, I guess. So, in paper magic, you are constantly passing priority. You may not be aware of it if you don't know the, uh, the intricate rules of magic, but basically every single step of the game, every single time somebody casts a spell, the game is asking you, do you want to do anything if you're the active player? And when the active player says, no, I don't want to do anything, the non-active player is asked, do you want to do anything? And if they say, no, I don't want to do anything, then the spell resolves, then the next step happens, whatever. Oftentimes you'll skip that. So for example, on turn one, on the upkeep, I'm actually asked, do I want to do anything? In paper magic, we just skip that. We skip the draw step. We just go straight to the main phase. I play a land, we do stuff. But this is going to happen in Magic Online. And there are two things that you can do with those priority questions. And those are called stops. You can have them on or you can have them off. And they're represented by these little white or black arrows on the bottom row here. These are my stops. If I was in a 1v1 game, there would also be arrows on the other side pointing downwards, and those would represent stops on my opponent's turn. So I have a stop set on the upkeep. It's a white arrow. That means it's turned on. That's saying, hey, Magic Online, when we get to my upkeep, I want you to ask me if I want to do anything or not. Now, this turn, I don't want to do anything, so I'm just going to click OK, and we're going to jump on over to the main phase. And you can see I didn't have a stop set for the draw phase. So it skipped over it. Because I've told Magic Online, I don't want to do anything on the draw step. Don't even bother asking me. So let's say I turn off uh, Begin Combat Attack and Block. And I play Dismal Backwater. And I'm going to gain a life because a trigger showed up. Anything on the stack is going to show up in a pop-up window right here. And I'm pretty okay with that, so I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to say that I'm okay with the main step. There's nothing else I want to do in the main step. Magic Online just entirely skipped the combat step. Now, I didn't have anything to do anyways, but it skipped me asking me if I wanted to do anything because I had turned off those stops. And I'm going to turn those stops back on before I jump into a real match and uh, suddenly can't quite understand what's happening here. Now, you may ask, why don't you just turn on all the stops? Why don't you stop every single step? And the reason for that is because Magic Online has a time limit for every single player in every single match. And if you're stopping at every single step to hit OK, you're going to waste a ton of time. And you're going to find yourself potentially losing a match because you run out of time. In a normal tournament, each player is given 25 minutes in which to do stuff when they have priority. So right now I have priority. The game is waiting for me to do something or tell it I don't want to do anything. So if I had a clock and it's going to show up by your avatar and your opponent's clock will show up by their avatar, you don't have one in a solitaire game of course, but if I had a clock right now, mine would be ticking down and my opponents would not. My opponents would be stopped. It's just like a chess clock. Now that clock does not reset between games with that opponent in that match. And if your clock hits zero, you lose the entire match instantly. It's very different from paper magic. So be very careful with that. You want to play quickly. You want to be playing carefully, but you want to be playing quickly. And one aspect of that is making sure that you don't have useless stops. You know, it's really, 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 really rare that you're going to want to do something on your draw step or your opponent's draw step or your damage step or your opponent's damage step. So you can turn those off and you can get back those, you know, seconds or two. And those seconds or two will add up, trust me. So you want to make sure that your stops are set where you need them. You really don't want to set all of them, but don't set too few either. This is the setup that I usually use. I do have one on the upkeep, even though it's really rarely used. You could probably turn that off. I never have draw step turned on for either me or my opponent. Both main phases I keep on, both beginning of combats I keep on, both declare attacking, both declare blocking I keep on. I turn off damage for everybody. End combat, 
I probably don't need on, but I do keep it on. Main phase two, of course, and definitely the end step. Both players' end steps I always have turned on because that's where you do a lot of stuff. But that stops one of the easiest things that confuses new players for sure. Uh, you want to make sure that those are set the way you want them set. Now, let's say I was playing with some random card that, you know, was absolutely best utilized during the draw step. During the game, I can just turn on the draw step stop. And then I can turn it off whenever I want. So just make sure that those are always set the way that you want. If you find Magic Online is skipping past Declare Blockers, you've probably turned this off. So make sure you do turn it back on. Make sure you have them set up the way that you want. Now there's one other aspect to playing fast with Magic, and that is the hotkeys. And I'm going to tell you about two of the hotkeys that are super, super, super useful. So we're going to jump back to the start of a new turn. There we go. The first hotkey by default is F2. F2 is the exact same as hitting the OK button. So I hit F2, and I've said OK. We've skipped ahead to the main phase step. So again, just like not setting all of your stops, I saved a couple of seconds by not dragging my mouse up here and clicking that button. And those two seconds are going to add up hundreds of times over in a single game. So definitely get used to hitting F2 to mean OK. So I'm going to play this Mountain, and then I'm going to play this War Named Aspirant. And then I have nothing else to do this turn. So I could hit OK one time to pass Main, another time for Begin Combat, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time, a seventh time. I could hit OK seven times to get through this turn. Or I could hit another very useful hotkey, F6. I just hit F6, and now we're at the next turn. F6 means that you are done. You are not going to play anything else this turn. You can hit that button, and you're going to save, you know, two seconds times seven on that turn. We're going to save 14 seconds right there. Doesn't sound like much, but again, think about that over, you know, 20 turns of magic or even more if you're playing certain formats. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Just be very, 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 very careful with F6 because you have a very tiny amount of time to turn off that F6. And you can turn it off by turning off auto yields, by right clicking and turning off auto yields. But yeah, if you hit that and your opponent plays a spell and you wanna to respond to it, you're gonna to be tough out of luck. So be very careful, use F6 only when you know that you're not going to be playing anything for sure, you know, when you're tapped out or when you have nothing left in your hand or something like that. Otherwise, you're going to generally want to stick to F2, the one that just says OK. There are several other hotkeys available. You can find them in your account settings under key bindings. Uh, I believe there's Control Y for yes and Control N for no. You know, if something's asking you yes or no, do you want to do this? Um, Several useful hotkeys that will save you time. And saving time is the name of the game, especially for new players. That chess clock thing really hurts new players if you're not prepared for it. So make sure that you are playing fast. Make sure you are using those hotkeys. Make sure that you are getting through in a timely fashion. Because trust me, nothing sucks more than losing just because you ran out of time. You don't want that to happen. But that's the gameplay of Magic Online. That is how basically every game of Magic will play out. Normally you'll have an opponent up here at the top, but uh, that's how it plays out. Everything is just sort of, you know, mentioned up here what's going on. So upkeep step, we can cast instants and activate abilities. We can't cast sorceries, obviously. Main phase, we can play our lands. It's always going to be telling you what's going on. It's going to be telling you if it's, uh, you know, waiting for you to say yes or no to something. It's going to tell you if it's waiting for you to choose a target of a, an ability that's resolving or whatever. So always keep your eye on that little white window. It'll tell you what's going on. But that's the gameplay of Magic Online. Uh, I'm not going to go through a draft or anything like that. Trust me, you can look at my channel to see hundreds of drafts if you want to see how the draft portion works. But it's very straightforward. You'll be given your pack and you'll double click the card that you want to take. And that's really about all there is to drafting. Uh, the deck building of drafting works just like it does for normal deck building, which you can see in my previous video where I talk about the collection pane and deck building. But that's the basic gameplay of Magic Online. It's really straightforward. Don't let anybody tell you that Magic Online is 
massively complicated and impossible to get into and a waste of time. It's really not. You're hearing that from people who probably haven't even touched Magic Online. It's really simple. It's really, really, really straightforward. But if you ever have any questions, comments, or suggestions about anything about my channel or about Magic Online, be sure to let me know. You can find me on Twitter at the Manaleek. that's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, and you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash themanaleek. You've already found me here on YouTube. There's a comment section directly below that is a great way for you to ask questions. I will answer any and all questions about Magic Online that you happen to have. If you have troubles, if you have concerns, if you have questions, if you have troubleshooting that needs to be done, I will definitely help you out. Just post a comment and let me know or hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Facebook. If you like these videos, if you like my channel, you should click the little thumbs up icons. That will let the world know that you like it. That'll let me know that you like it, and that'll keep my videos rising up through the ranks. You should also subscribe to my channel. There's a subscribe button below each video and one in the outro of each video. That's going to keep you up to date on all the latest crack -a pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and any other random videos that pop up here or there, and there are a bunch of them. So you'll be the first to know by subscribing to the channel. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.